Got Alana joining. Is she good? I'm Alana. Hey. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, welcome, guys. Episode 18. Um, I just wanted to start off and say thanks for everybody who's been watching throughout. It's been really fun doing this. Um, and also just getting to know everybody a little bit better through this. Um, I think that we've kind of been talking about when we're going to bring this to an end for season one. And we've decided on the 30th is going to be our last episode for this season. Um, then we're going to kind of review and see what we can bring for next season and season two. Um, maybe switch things up a little bit. Um, on the last episode, we're going to have our first hosts back on Shakira and um, Sandeep. So they're going to kind of do a full circle and we'll kind of review how, what they brought up in the first episode and kind of talk about how they've changed throughout. Um, so it'll be kind of fun. Um, and today we have Sam on from Novos. Hi, Sam. And he's going to be sharing some of his tips about uh, virtual onboarding and recruiting. Um, so excited to hear about that. And I think today I'm going to kick off with a usual kind of question for icebreaker. <laughs> um, what was the question, Caroline, that you were at, you brought up? Um, that it was, who would you invite to your lockdown barbecue? Yes, yes. I think that's a good okay. question. Um, so, Caroline, who would you bring to your barbecue? Okay, well, I've given myself time to think about it, really. So, uh, <laughs> so I would have... Jimi Hendrix, obviously I'm allowed dead people, Jimi yeah. Hendrix, <laughs> Ella Fitzgerald, Rafa Nadal, and Arthur Conan Doyle, all okay. idols of mine. Very cool. Cool. Um, uh, Helen, three to five people. We'll do three to five. If you can't think of five, three to five people. Okay, well, I think I'd go for Brené Brown and Simon Sinek. These are the two I'm reading at the moment. <laughs> and then I probably also go for Elton John to make it a bit more interesting. Um, I think that three, and then another somebody else. Maybe, maybe somebody like Mother Teresa, actually. <laughs> it's good to have the variety at these barbecues to keep things interesting. <laughs> Jenny, who would you bring? Oh, goodness me. Wow, that's one heck of a question. Um, <laughs> oh. At the top of my head, I'm thinking Pablo Picasso, um, Coco Chanel, um, Viv Westwood. Um, <laughs> it's all, all very design creative at the moment, isn't it? Um, and possibly the architect Antonio Gaudi to ask him, uh, you know, what goes through his, his head when he designs? Because I'm just really interested in creative people and their uh, thought processes. That sounds like a very cultured barbecue. <laughs> yeah, a little bit too cultured for me, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a drunken mess in the corner, but you know, hey, they'd be cool. <laughs> Joe, who'd you bring? Um, well, I was going to say Jimi Hendrix as well, but I don't want to copy. I'd have Robin Williams, Bob Marley, and I don't know, maybe Adele should be a character. <laughs> she's actually funny. I've seen her yeah, uh, she's very very before, funny. but she was cracking up the whole time. Um, okay, Lucy, who are you bringing? Hey everyone, so I'm thinking um, food-wise for a barbecue, I would have Joe Wicks over because I love his food and I just think he's hilarious. I'd, I want, I'd love to meet, Mar I can't pronounce his name because he's Danish, Mark Viking, who's like the head of Huga because I'm obsessed with Huga and I'd love to just talk to him about that. And then, and it's not one person but ABBA because they can entertain me because I'm obsessed with their music. <laughs> 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 Great, thank you. Um, Maria, I'm interrupting your lunch. What, who would you bring? Oh, no. All right, this is hard. And I, actually, I was going to go with Stevie Wonder for music, but now that um, Joe said Adele, I was like, she is funny and she can sing. So I'm mm -hmm. like, do I bring her? Let's just have them both because she's funny. Stephen Fry, because I just love him. Um, Maya Angelou, because I just love her. Um, maybe that's enough. Yeah. It's hard. That's a hard question. I need more time to think about it. I know. It's, it's a good question. Thanks, Caroline. <laughs> Mark Thompson, who are you bringing? I'm uh, still thinking about Lucy saying she wants Joe Wicks because of his food. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I'm going to mix it up a bit. I think I'm going to go for Trump, Johnson, 
and okay. uh, Eric Cantona. And a rifle. And, and potentially a rifle, yeah, but that's what the hot coals are for, isn't it? <laughs> Just give them oh, food yeah. poisoning. Yeah. Can you record your barbecue, please? Yeah. 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 Actually, I'd like to come to that one. <laughs> uh, Rebecca, who are you bringing? This is super, super hard. So I need to give me a bit more time, but I still feel under pressure. So um, thinking about whose book I'm reading at the moment, I'm reading Michelle Obama's Becoming book, which I'm, mm -hmm. I'm falling in love with her. I already I already love Barack, but I love Michelle as well. So I think Barack and Michelle Obama are definitely mm -hmm. the best ones on my list. Um, Comedy-wise, don't judge, but I love Michael McIntyre. He cracks me up. <laughs> it's very family friendly. It's very family-friendly humour. So Michael McIntyre's on the list. Um, if I'm bringing my husband, which I probably ought to, then he would he would request John Williams um, from he's a composer, so he would be he's his number one guest. So I probably need to bring John Williams as well. And I've got a best friend in Australia, and I would love to see her. And I don't know when I'm going to see her, so she's, she's also on my list as well. Is John Williams the uh, composer for? Isn't there a lot of big movies? Like yeah, he does like Jurassic Park and yeah, Star Wars, Wars and Harry Potter, all the classics. It's the yeah, it's amazing. They did um, they do I do a uh, when the Royal Opera House was open and um, uh, the Royal Philharmonic were playing there. They have some wonderful evenings sometimes dedicated to him playing his music, and it's it's amazing. Very cool, very cool. Um, Sam, who are you bringing? Uh, so I kind of had to steal some ideas from other people. I'm so mm. glad you didn't ask me first. But I've got, <laughs> um, so like comedy-wise, I've probably got Mickey Flanagan. Um, for the music, John Mayer. Uh, to cook a barbecue, Rick Stein. And then David Attenborough, because he's like literally seen the world. That's a good and one. then Jeff Goldblum, because he's just mad. <laughs> John, I want to put David Attenborough in mine. I can't believe I didn't think of him. Too much pressure. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cool. And Willorna, who are you ringing? I think you're muted. Yeah, so mine is going to be quite a mix. So quite a lot of people, because I like a big event, a big barbecue. Because um, we can bring some dead people around. I'll bring Martin Luther King, Barack and Michelle, Nigel Farage, Neil Griffin, um, <laughs> Beyonce, <laughs> Michael Jackson, <laughs> Nigella for the food, um, PDD, Tanya <laughs> uh, <Kanye> West, <laughs> Edward King, Edward King, the editor of Vogue, <laughs> um, my David Cameron, Donald Trump, <laughs> Bojo. Because uh, and then two of my two intellectuals in my family who love to talk about politics. You can see where this is going. Yeah. I love politics and international relations, and I want to get to hear about. I want to see Nigel Farage and Neil Griffin in the same room with Barack and Michelle Bojo. So bring the left and the right and the far right <laughs> and the far left together. Mix, put in some nice music, and also I bring in some Catherine Jenkins for the opera and the classical type. But then we have Didi, we have Beyonce. So we just all mix it all up. Yeah. And oh yeah, um, that some, I'll bring someone to cook some normal sort of Western food. Then I'll bring a Nigerian barbecue artist who does suya, which is a Nigerian um, uh, roast meat. And it's very spicy. And I'd want to see how these people react to that. So yeah, it's going to mix it all up. <laughs> can I just say, can we just go around to Willorna's? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I yeah. really have to part my list and just go around to Willorna's. Is that okay, Willorna? Yeah, <laughs> come on down. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, oh, has anyone had a burner boy? He's a Nigerian artist, really good at Afro. Yeah. Yeah. So we need the Afro. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that just sounds amazing, Willorna. <laughs> Yeah, I think you've all got our votes. Well, Lorna, we're coming to yours. You win. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Not everybody's barbecue sounds great. I think um, we'll have to book these in at some point. Um, of course. Rosie, so Rosie, actually, I was going to say it's going to sound a bit cheesy, this, but actually, I'd just be happy to show up at a barbecue with you lot. <laughs> Frankly, that would be Honestly, really nice. Do you know what I, I mean? <laughs> yeah. 
we'll make it happen. Absolutely. Definitely will. Um, okay. Thanks everybody. So Sam, we're going to kick off with questions for you. Could you okay, cool. just to start off, give us a little bit of background about Novos, what you guys do, um, and then maybe a little bit about how you've adapted throughout COVID, what the initial challenges you faced were? Yeah, for sure. Um, so we're, we're an SEO agency. Um, so we do like organic growth for clients. Um, probably beauty of what we do is probably that we just do it for e-com clients. So we're able to like differentiate versus competitors and we kind of just like go hands on into the CMSs, so like Shopify, Magento, etc. Um currently got a team of fifteen and it was our first year doing it last year, like uh full time. So we've grown <clears throat> grown pretty quickly. Um and we're working with some cool clients like um so we've worked with made.com, uh Patch Plants, Deliveroo, Boom and Wild, uh and Thread as well, to like name a few. Um, and so since lockdown started, you've kind of started, you've started working with us, um, using employee voice 24 seven, which has been great to work with you guys. Um, and could you just share some of the changes that you've made in the last few months using that tool employee voice? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we've, um, so we send it out every, uh, three times a week. So Monday, Wednesday and Friday, and then it's just like a simple question, like, uh, how are you feeling today? And probably after like two weeks, we started getting feedback from the team around um, specifically like workload. So like workload obviously negatively impacts happiness. Um, kind of like the progress of how they did yesterday with their tasks was like negatively or positively impacting today's work. Mm -hmm. um, weather is a massive thing. Like if it's sunny, our scores were always really high. Um, and then exercise was having like a positive and negative uh, impact on their happiness. So uh, kind of basically from there, what we did, we kind of restructured the team to try and counter the workload. So previously we probably had like five people overseeing 15 clients. Whereas now we kind of like merged another team into that team. So now it's about eight people managing 15 to 17 clients. Mm -hmm. so it's a lot more like less, like less headspace focusing on a wider range of clients. You can just focus on a smaller amount and just like deliver higher quality work. Um, in terms of like the progress of yesterday, so it's kind of, I think a lot of what, how the team was working was kind of like, say, say they got like 10 tasks to do this week. They would, it would be like, you put them in for Monday, whatever wasn't done would get moved into Tuesday and so on and so forth. So it never ever felt like you're getting anything done or like the to-do list was never ending. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of changed it around and just did daily stand-ups and just said, like, what, are, what are the three things you want to achieve today? Um, and it just made it more actionable and a lot more achievable as well. So it's like people were making progress yesterday, put them in a much better mood and like more motivated and more efficient today. Um, so that's been like quite a big changer for us. And then, so we can't do anything about the weather, unfortunately, but <laughs> in terms of like exercise, so we've, we've already got like Vitality and that gives you like really good perks. Like you get an Apple watch on like paying monthly um, and then you get access to Virgin gyms, but obviously they can't do that in lockdown. So we started doing, um, started offering to pay for like virtual classes, not virtual classes, like outdoor classes. So there's like a site called B BAU Fit and then like they search all of the fitness classes in local areas have offered to pay for like employees to do those classes each week. Um, and we're contemplating doing a, like a group Strava. Um, so like getting everybody onto Strava and then setting like a goal. So like, I think my girlfriend's agency's got one to, to run to the moon and back or something like that between the agency. <laughs> so like we're, we're contemplating doing something like that to like motivate with exercise and just, um, cause it does have a really big impact on happiness. Mm -hmm. definitely we've started using strive ourselves the happiness index we were originally doing it to reach a goal um for a charity that we were supporting uh beam uh thanks lucy for setting that up um and we actually after we reached our goal we decided to just keep it because it's um just a really fun way to motivate motivate each other and um see kind of what everybody's up to and get a better feel of connection with each other so yeah i recommend using strava internally if you're with your teams if you can um it's been fun um, yeah, I think we'd definitely give it a go. Yeah. 
Um, so you've also been using customer voice. Um, I can't remember how long you've been using it for, but could you just tell us how that's been going using that and how you've kind of, um, how it's kind of impacted your business? Yeah, it's, it's, it's obviously a lot tougher than employee voice because clients might not even fill it out. So we, we're, we're trying to figure out like ways to incentivize clients to do it more or like potentially just embedding it into like the pitching process to, for them to be doing it regularly uh, each month. But of the clients that fed back so far, like we've been able to, um, like we've been able to correlate how the team's happiness and the client's happiness uh, like correlate with each other. So basically like we've got one graph, which is the employees and they've gone from like say like a six out of 10 when we first started to about an eight. And then the clients in, in similar, like a similar trend, they've gone from like a seven to like a nine. Um, mm -hmm. So there's like little things like they, they'd give like a, a big feedback about how happy they are. And then they'd give like some initial feedback like this could be better or we could improve this. And then we just feed that back to the individual like account managers then. Um, so I think m more than anything, it just, it's like a, a vehicle or like a medium that they never had before. to like mm -hmm. communicate with us like anonymously um, rather than just sending an email when they got unhappy. Okay. So before you're using customer voice, how are you reaching out to your clients? Where are you just emailing them and just checking in with them? And Yeah, exactly. So just like, yeah initially it was like we got a new tool um yeah if you wouldn't mind filling it out give us a small like insight into how we're working day to day etc yeah. um, cool. so yeah a handful of them filled it out and we're just trying to find other ways to get them to fill it out more regularly yeah definitely so, yeah super uh, insightful great um, if anybody has any questions by the way throughout this feel free to ask um so you've decided to go fully remote like a lot of other organizations and we've had a few people on on um H &E pjs talk about it but could you just share a little bit of how the future work is looking for you now that you've decided to go fully remote yeah for sure like we um we literally just moved from spaces to uh we work and the month we were due to move in so we just asked everybody like what what their what how they're going to work like moving forward what what did they want to do and a lot of them were saying like they probably just come in twice a week once everything calmed down a bit mm -hmm. so it was almost like pointless paying for an office just to do that when we can use other ways to like meet up with the team so we cancelled that we cancelled that office and now we're going we're calling it like remote first so we don't want to it's like one of our team raised a good point where it's like it's like some businesses like shopify for example they're going fully remote so just completely removed the office so everybody's working from home but then you've almost moved to the other extreme then where you constantly work from home and then you get fed up of home and it's more like that middle ground of flexibility that people want mm -hmm. um so we're kind of doing this almost like a hybrid so we're doing um at least three or four times a month we'd come in for like culture events so like culture is probably the hardest thing we found to maintain or improve while remote. Like we can do all of our work remote, but culture is just so difficult to mm. maintain. Um, so we're gonna do those like every Thursday uh, across the month. And then on top of that, we're gonna start using, so like WeWork have got this membership where you pay monthly and you can go in and like rent a desk for a day. So everybody's gonna have like that kind of WeWork membership. And we're gonna explore other areas like um, I don't know if you know the Hoxton, but they, they have like co-working spaces mm -hmm. and then you can rent a room in there. So just having these different options throughout London so that each week we can go to somewhere different to work. Um, and then people working from home probably like two or three times a week then. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the direction a lot of organizations are going in, just kind of having uh, the ability to work from home, but also having a space where you can come in and collaborate with each other every now and then. Because yeah, you can't exactly. really that human connection when you're, you know, really talking to somebody face to face. But... Yeah, for sure. And then, uh, yeah, we did, we did it for the first time yesterday. Like a small amount of us went into WeWork for the first time, and yeah, we do, we, we have missed the office. <laughs> <laughs> How did that go? Yeah, it's really good. It's like WeWork was really quiet, and like that area, like down in Moorgate, was just was dead. It's just mm -hmm. it's quite depressing, actually. Like how much it's how quiet it is um but yeah in terms of like just day-to-day -day work it's just so much more efficient um 
it was nice not having to wear earphones all day and you could just go into a booth and just yeah. go on a call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I bet it's good to see teammates as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so um, as you are going fully remote, that also means virtually uh, recruiting and onboarding new team members. And you also mentioned at the beginning of the call that you're growing pretty quickly, which is great. Um, so have you had to onboard anybody yet? Or could you just explain to us how you're going to start doing this? Yeah, for sure. So we've been quite fortunate to keep growing uh, during this pandemic. But um, we've had four uh, four employees join remotely. Uh, the first one was literally just as we went into lockdown. So like we hired Laura and she was intending to be um, probably like coming to the office at least four times a week, but she's now fully remote. And yeah, so it's quite a, it's quite a challenge. I think, I think we <laughs> say it's at least five times harder to onboard somebody remotely than it is face to face. Like, um, like some of the obvious challenges you have, like like troubleshooting technology, that is an absolute nightmare. Whereas like, if you're next to each other, like face to face, you can either just take over the laptop or just like point to a screen. But doing it remotely is just like, you have to do a screen share and it's just, mm. it takes t- easily twice as long. Um, and then, yeah, Laura mentioned as well that she being fully remote, like one of the challenges she has is like just general chit chat and just like, understanding the culture a bit more outside of just work so like you could go and get a coffee with someone for example and just get to know them on a more personal level whereas mm-hmm. working remote it's quite hard to do that like you just have to set up a dedicated zoom call um one-on-one so it's, it's a lot harder to to get to know people on like a more personal level mm-hmm. and then um and then from our perspective another big challenge was um like you can't really pick up on body language or anything so if you're in an office you can see if someone's struggling or um being frustrated by a certain client or a task whereas you can't pick up on any of that when you're remote and the only time you ever get it is if they reach out directly uh, and let you know so like a few tips that we've we found basically like we almost use law as like a a a dummy test um, (laughs) for the rest of them and she's been very helpful like passing back feedback to us as well um but we always start with like a pre-call so like if they're meant to join on monday uh the week before we do like uh an hour-long call where we would from our perspective we'd like go through the agency values um give an overview of our tools our clients and the team so they've got all that background knowledge before they start on the monday um so like from my own perspective that helps me because then i can keep going on with my day without having to uh spend that hour or two with them on that on the start date and then from their their point of view like they can get that all of that background before they start so they can hit the ground running um we also do did, did daily stand-ups so like every single day we'd have 15 15 20 minute catch up in the mornings uh so like laura mentioned that was particularly helpful for her she like knew exactly what she was doing she could ask any of any questions she wanted at that time and just removed any additional like, uncertainty uh, video is like an obvious one as well so like it's so easy to just jump on a call and not put your video on but it's just so much more personable um mm. like put a face to a name and just yeah it's just so much better than just doing like a standard phone call have you had anybody experience some kind of like i don't know i i know for a few of us in the happiness index we've had to we've experienced a little bit of zoom fatigue and i know others have as well but have you gone through that a little bit yeah for sure i have personally yeah. it's just so uh just screens in general like I just can't spend the day looking at screens and then yeah. you watch tv in the evening and it's my eyes are in agony so I started, <laughs> started doing puzzles again for the first time so like jigsaw puzzles and that, that's been a bit of a game changer last last Sunday I stayed up for like the latest I've ever stayed up on a Sunday before just doing a puzzle <laughs> <They're> addicting. <laughs> yeah and I think with just general zoom fatigue like we just do if it's if it's like a, a non-client call or if it's just something like oh i just need help quickly mm. uh, that's when we just wouldn't do a zoom call and just do like a, a phone call or like a skype without video yeah uh, but it's more like official meetings or like team catch-ups or client mm. calls um a little one that is quite important is like using emojis more so like we use slack a lot 
And there's like such a massive difference of just saying like, just yes in Slack and not having any context to what that other person is saying. Like you can come yeah. across quite blunt and like you've done something wrong almost, but then if you just put a smiley after it, it makes yeah. such a big difference to perceiving how you're saying that and like your tone. Because yeah, myself, definitely. my business partner, we've had so many unnecessary arguments over <laughs> Skype, uh, Slack, sorry, just because we didn't get the tone or the understanding of each other. Yeah. And we it's just think the other person's in a bad mood. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I mean, like you said earlier, we don't have that uh, like body language. You can't read that when you're having a conversation yeah. and we're doing everything virtually. So even just adding a little emoji smile at the end of a sentence or something is it does make a difference. And memes, too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Make a big difference. Um, and yeah, at the start, we did like so many quizzes and like virtual quizzes with everybody. We yeah. Did things like... Um, guess whose flat this is so like we'd send three pictures of someone's flat across the team and they all had to vote and then like the winner got a prize that helps to like get to know the team a lot better and like a lot more personable uh we did one like guess whose fridge this was and then um baby photos as well which is very interesting <laughs> and then yeah probably the last tip that this one we didn't actually do this one with laura but um we like feedback that she gave to us that we're going to try for like future hires was assigning like an on onboarding buddy so when she joined she was mainly talking to myself or her manager whereas just assigning somebody potentially like a different team that can onboard them and just give them a different perspective of the agency or somebody else to talk to rather than just purely talking about your work with your manager mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as an example so we're going to try that with the next uh with the next hire we're going to make that's a really good idea um, and then I've got a blog with a few more tips as well. I think I think I've got ten in total. Yeah, actually, I'll share that with everybody um, after. Actually, I can share it in the chat now, but I um, will also share it in the follow up afterwards. Um, did Laura have any other kind of suggestions for you guys about like how onboarding virtually? I know it's not easy, and we're all learning, I guess, as we go. But... Yeah, for sure. Um, she also said when yeah about. She, she couldn't. She didn't know her level of experience within the team as well, because mm -hmm. typically, like when you're in the office, somebody might ask certain questions that you might be able to help out with, and then you understand your potentially potentially one of the more senior people within the team, and then you can help the juniors out a bit more. Whereas mm -hmm. remote, she didn't understand. She couldn't get any perspective perception or across this uh, across this for this across the team. Mm -hmm. So we're potentially trying to do something where not so much an old job, but maybe more like employee profiles or something within, mm -hmm. we use Notion, it was like almost like an intranet so that they can just get an understanding of the person a little bit more um, and just understand their experience. Yeah. But that's something we're having a little think about before we implement and uh, trying to solve. Definitely. Also, another thing that's kind of difficult to gauge as well as when you're communicating with people, I mean, there's so many different ways of getting in touch with somebody. You can email them or send them a WhatsApp or send a Discord or Slack chat thing. So it's finding sure. another way to communicate with people as well, you know? So that, that's, that can be kind of difficult. Um, yeah. So my next question for you is, with remote remote onboarding, we had kind of a conversation about this last week um, with a talent recruiter from ASDA, and just interesting to hear about like recruiting for from different areas other than just the UK. Have you guys thought about that for Novos and like trying to find the talent from different places and bring even more neurodiversity into your workplace? Uh, so we were very London based before, so I think we've now we've definitely started branching out outside of london and like getting more remote workers like i think one of our hires was down in brighton and then another one's in cornwall and another one's like more oxford area so we definitely brand it's allowed us to branch out more in the uk um and i think three of our teammates now as well they've one's in denmark one's in switzerland and one's gone to spain to like mm -hmm. visit family or just get a break and they're carrying on working so it doesn't affect us in any way and we're, we're definitely open to it. I think the hardest thing for us is like um, actually talent acquisition and just knowing and finding those good talent, the talented people within the different markets 
Like, mm-hmm. it, it took us a while to even crack it in London, um, just filtering out people that are irrelevant or just don't have the experience. Um, but we got a pretty good recruiter for that now. It's just that's probably one of the biggest challenges we'd have to overcome. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of like, if we do find the right candidate, I don't think it would make any difference to us. Like, if somebody's in Spain versus Cornwall, it would really make a massive difference to us. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of people too are worried about like the time zone differences and stuff and yeah. working, coordinating that. But at, bef- I mean, before lockdown, I think that was more of an issue. But now I think people are finding that it's a lot easier than they thought to be able to, if you want to go home and work from a different time zone, or if you're know, a few hours behind, it's actually working out okay. Yeah, for sure. I, yeah, I've worked with people in different time zones before and it's just like, yeah, like transparency and just being honest and just like managing time. Um, that's always about like we got a few clients in the US and their time zones are very different to ours. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, yeah we, don't, we wouldn't really have an issue with it, I don't think. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, well, I guess that was all the questions I had for you today, but if anybody else would like to ask any questions for Sam, um, I just shared the article in the group chat as well, but he's got some really great points and tips about just, um, virtual onboarding and recruiting. So, uh, I've got one, Sam, it's Mark. Um, hey, Mark. Do, do you think you learn more from asking your customers more stuff or asking your employees? Uh, employees definitely um it was very insightful and to be able to like i think the best thing about the happiness index was like the trackability of it because like we would we would definitely be able to ask them how they're feeling in a snapshot moment but now to look back and see actually we were on like a six out of ten a few weeks ago and now we're on like an eight and it's very re- rewarding to see that growth That's amazing. um yeah whereas like some of the clients it's quite hard to get detail out of them. Like sometimes they're either super detailed and very positive with one negative or they'll just be like, yeah, great. <laughs> and it's like, it's, it's quite hard to get more out of the clients. Whereas like with, with the team, like we can, we can explain a lot more to them and they're a lot more receptive. Yeah. And a follow-up question to that. So at the moment you can't, there's, it's hard to correlate. You haven't seen the correlation between the score of your employees going up and the, score of your customers going up uh we have seen a correlation yeah um we just it's just right now we don't have enough customer uh information for it to be like like we've got over 200 employee uh scores so it's very accurate and a lot of data behind that whereas like the client one is 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 only about 10 right so it's like we just need a lot more data for it to be an accurate correlation Mm -hmm. Um, hi, Helen here. Can I just ask a question hey. around the, re- the remote first, uh, as you call it, rather than fully remote? So yeah. did you have anyone who really didn't like that idea? Like they liked to be in the office five days a week, so they were very against it? Or, you know, did you have any that kind of perspective? Um, no one for like five days a week, but there was um, there's two of them that were just like really missed the office. Um, they got a bit gutted when we said we were cancelling it. Um, and yeah, they were expect we were they were hoping yeah. to go back within the next month or so. But um, once we explained like the whole WeWork situation and how like, we would be going into the office, they were still happy with that. Um, and I think they're they're more looking okay. to like three, maybe four times a week now. I think mm-hmm. I think everybody would just like that one day at home or just like just to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. And are you having to align the days when people are in? So like, does that make sense? Thanks for the tips on onboarding. We've had about five people start since lockdown and they've not seen any one of us before. So it is a bit strange. And I'll, I'll definitely take some of those tips that you've shared there. And on the subject of going back to the office, we are trying to be mindful that not everyone has enjoyed working from home and there are people who have really missed that sort of social contact. And also perhaps their home environment is not really ideal for working from home, apart from the physical aspects of it. Some people have difficult sort of living conditions. You don't know what's going on in their relationships and that kind of thing. So 
it's a it's a real balancing act trying to because we're looking at planning to go back to the office and yeah it's it's just my it's just worth not remembering that because when we all yeah, started sure. like people in senior management were like oh yeah it's great our ceo was working from somewhere outside london in a mansion where she has all this space but we have you know demographic that lives in central london zone two that in flats you know so yeah it's worth yeah definitely remembering that really yeah i think we've seen that as well with like probably like the more junior employees mm -hmm. too like um potentially they are in a, their first rental um and they are getting fed up with it quite quickly and sometimes it is quite hard to get their them to like speak up because they are a little bit more junior but again, yeah. like we just use the happiness index just as it does like an anonymous, um, anonymous uh, voting and like feedback. But yeah, definitely. We've uh, definitely seen that with some client, with some of our team. I've not considered the, um, on the new starter one about you, when you start a new job, you you right, you you automatically find your level of where you fit in that organisation, don't you? Because yeah. you want to be, be seen to be adding value, unless you're a graduate mm -hmm. of the first job and you don't know what's going on. But are you going to be seen to be adding value? But then, yeah, it's really hard if you're not seeing anybody. As in, who's this guy asking, offering yeah, help? Sure. Yeah. And have you you said you 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 were creating a profile? <laughs> Have you actually done the profile bit yet? No, not yet. That's uh, that's something. That's an initial thought that we think could help to solve the problem. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably next steps, and then potentially asking some of the new new recruits that we're having, see if they've got any more ideas as well. What do you think you'll put in the profile? I think it's probably just a little bit more, a little bit like an initial like uh, serious professional section, like number of experiences, specialities, what they enjoy, dislike, etc um and then just a little bit more like quirky fun just asking some questions uh just to get to know the person a little bit more nice. cool uh, did anybody else have any other questions at all <laughs> sorry hello um when you said about doing the culture day what do they look like that's a good they... question i was actually wondering about that too yeah so we got um basically that's a good time to get to know people better right? yeah yeah exactly so we um every so we got like a, a leadership team and then um we assign them a budget every month and they break that up into like team training and then whatever's left over they put into give it to the culture club and then that's to uh, well three people within the company and then they basically ask everyone in the company what they want to do in terms of like events and culture etc and then create like a table and then uh based on the budget they would yeah they would start implementing those ideas so it's kind of like we don't want it to be say like the founders of company just dictating what they think is good it's like definitely mm, just want it exactly yeah yeah so i worked in companies like that Not where it's just work. yeah it's painful <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i think, I think we will have. <laughs> yeah we promised them um a sushi samba meal um when we signed a certain client last year and that was when we were like four people and then we got we signed that client we're planning it and then we went into lockdown and now we're like 15 people so it's just like it's gonna be an expensive meal <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's shut up. I just think I think as well we might if if things do calm down a bit more and things start to turn to we might try a um like a visit to like an Airbnb on the outside of London or something um and try and go away for like a week as a team just to like try and get back to normal and get, yeah, again. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thanks. Very good. Um, cool. Well, if nobody has any other questions, I think we'll shut it down for today. Um, but thank you, Sam, for that. I no will worries. send a follow up to everybody with, with the article included as well, so you can all have a look at it. Um, and another one you've written as well about working with us is really great, so I'll send that as well. Um, but next week, uh, I believe we have Natasha from First Agency. 
Um, and then after that will be our last episode. So hopefully we can see you all again for <laughs> the next few episodes and then we'll review again. Share in your ideas too, if you wanna hear something or you know some kind of topic with us um, that you want us to talk about, then we're happy to sh hear your feedback. Um, yeah, thanks everybody. Thanks, Rosie. Thanks. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, we'll see you again. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.